I always had that interest in performance enhancing drugs because I, if I'm being honest, I probably had, um, they called it bigorexia. Maybe sure. we can talk about that in that cast too, but like here, let me just go back to the original point that I was talking about with like putting on mm -hmm. muscle. Cause I found that, that, that picture and it popped up, but mm -hmm. this one here is about, I'm going to say I was 29, 30 ish there. And this oh, is about physique, yeah. 41 or so. Now this is pre TRT. Okay. Right. Um, Great didn't, didn't really change much. So I never really had a hard time, you know, like putting on muscle and like, mm -hmm. you know, keeping it, but I always had that interest in performance enhancing drugs because I, if I'm being honest, I probably had, um, they called it bigorexia when I came across it in muscle media yeah. magazines, you know, with Bill Phillips and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, you never feel like you're big enough. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, it's, you bench, you know, three, three and a half plates, you squat three, you know, three or four plates. And you're like, you know, you want to get to five or six and you see those guys in a magazine, you just keep pushing and pushing and you mm -hmm. can never achieve the size that comes with the strength. So you kind of like have this mental image in your mind that you should be bigger, but there's, but there's a cost associated with that. Isn't mm -hmm. there like, you know, it does a number on your, on your, uh, bones, you know, your joints, your ligaments, your, your organs. Body. Yeah, your whole your body. Your whole body, really. The, like the bodybuilding, what you see in the magazines, that's just a picture. And it doesn't represent the what's going on internally. So that's why we, like in the beginning, people started using steroids for bodybuilding because there was only bodybuilding. Hormone replacement therapy didn't really exist unless it was like real clinical androgen deficiency. Mm -hmm. And then people didn't go to, to pu puberty and that kind of stuff. And most of the steroids that were designed were designed for other medical purposes. Right, uh, sarcopenia, muscle wasting disease, uh, bone mineralization issues, and masteron was even used to help uh, mitigate breast cancer mm. right, in women. So that's a steroid being prescribed to women. Now, the bodybuilding world started adapting that and then, of course, d developed phenomenal physiques with that. But a lot of people use dosages that are way higher than are medically prescribed. And um, like for the TRT guys, we have a little bit of an image that steroids are going to give this physique that we see in the magazine or, or on Instagram or on YouTube, yeah. which in reality is not the case um, because the pharmacology involved to be a bodybuilder is far and far, far higher than what we do for well-being, anti-aging, right? To have a little bit stable serum concentrations of your testosterone, estrogen, and, and get more productivity out of it. So there's, there's a big difference. And, and if you want to be a bodybuilder, well, you're going to have to bump up the dosages far beyond hormone replacement. Yeah. But if you, you, if you started out as a natural bodybuilder, when did you just start, yeah. um, you know, experimenting with PEDs? When I was 26. So I started bodybuilding when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I did not respond so well. I'll be the first one to say it. Like my pictures did not look as good as yours. I was trying to make career like business came first mm -hmm. and then I would put bodybuilding second. So I would do the meals. I would do the training. But I was not living like a full-time bodybuilder where everything revolved around training and eating and right, maximizing that avenue because, well, up until social media, there was no real money in it. And I always Yeah, well, there's still not a lot of money in it today unless you have a large audience, right? Uh, well, you'll be surprised. Like some guys are really banking on it. Really? Even Yeah, yeah. Through social media, of course, because like if you're just localized and you're a personal trainer, you're not really banking. But through okay. social media, with all the discount codes and uh, offering services, coaching consultations, and ebooks, and, and th there's a decent amount of money to be made. Okay. But w when I started, and when you started, there was no social media to promote your uh, avenue. So no. I, uh, I never really thought about taking steroids because I was happy with how I looked. I mean, for the business world, I was already too big, mm -hmm. right? Being a natural, was saying too big, and then. Uh, when that business thing kind of fell apart due to the economic crisis in 2008, 2009, that's when I decided, you know what? Bodybuilding is my passion. I'm going to see what the fuss is all about. And I started with a cycle. So, but that was after 11 years of uh, drug free bodybuilding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, I had a, and like, what did you do for a cycle at that time to like enter into the competing world? Um, 250 tests per week, which was half of what was generally recommended online. They recommend 500 tests and the uh, Deanibal kickstart. I just made a video yeah. about that. Yeah. It will be online shortly. Um, and I, it didn't ma really make much sense to me because you saw a lot of these cycle logs on uh, the steroid forums and people would get a ton of side effects. 
within week five or six and and so i figured you know what i'm gonna start low like the at that time hormone replacement therapy was already present mm -hmm. so i just started with a little bit higher than hormone replacement and i, I had good results and is that something that you run year round or is it like you'll use it to try to you know build a physique compete you know do a photo shoot and you kind of taper it back to like hrt levels like a like a therapeutic dose to try to keep you at a consistent level so at the time i ran a cycle for 16 weeks because plastic and cruising wasn't really understood and and i had coming down to a lower dose wasn't really popularized yet we we're talking about 10 years ago mm -hmm. i'm 37 now and so I, I i did my cycle i came off i did post cycle therapy is this and then i uh traveled to, no that's that's a recent picture oh that's recent so that's like after, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah no nobody looks like this on their first cycle They'll yeah I was, to I was trying to scroll through here because there was one in here where you just look like a huge tank <laughs> i mean like you know here you got the shoulders like boulders right yeah yeah here was still a pretty saucy yeah so there, there's somewhere on my instagram there, there's yeah. some old picture yeah yeah, but all like, every year always, ago. Always big, like like always a big dude. What's your um height and weight normally? Um right um, I'm five nine, so that's hundred and seventy four, seventy five centimeters. Okay. And I, I think the heaviest I got to was like two hundred and fifty five pounds, hundred and fifteen kilos. Wow. That's now, that's a lot of muscle for, for for that height. Yeah, yeah. And and the weird thing is like when you're that big, you don't see how big you are, you still think you're too small. No, you're because you're actively you're yeah. actively trying to chase that. And then you see a picture next to a normal individual. Yeah. And you're like, man, I didn't realize how <laughs> really? Right? Because you're always comparing yourself to other bodybuilders. It's, yeah. it's like, that's where the big orexia and, and a little bit of the curse comes into play because you surround yourself in that little niche, little circle of astronomically huge dudes. Yeah. And you always think you're the smallest. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's where the abuse comes into play. So, um, right. I, I took some time off. I did another post psychotherapy recently um to resolve that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease which came from the lifestyle and now that's completely how did you resolved. get that like like talk about that because you went off all peds everything changed your diet mm -hmm. completely like I, I was following your updates when you were doing that okay um you lost a lot of weight and muscles yeah. you know not as much muscle as you knew, you'd think but i mean a lot of it came back but i mean you also started doing things like icing your balls and trying to like yeah. kickstart your own um testosterone production which it looked like you're quite successful like one of the questions a lot of people ask me whenever i start leaning into like trt conversations on i'm by no means a uh, research expert like i lean on guys like you and jay campbell and a few other people that i look towards plus the literature that i've read but i mean like uh, it seemed like it was pretty easy for you to kickstart your own testosterone production to healthy levels right yeah yeah i'm a Listen, I didn't need it medically. When I was 26, my testosterone was around 650 nanograms per deciliter. Mm -hmm. So that's middle middle of the reference range. And I think I could have gotten it higher with the information that I have nowadays, right? I'm, I learned a lot more since the age of 26. Mm -hmm. So when I decided to come off after blasting, cruising, and you know, you do a bodybuilder cycle, you go back to hormone replacement, to clean out, get healthy, do a bodybuilder cycle again. And I did that for about eight years straight. Now, this lifestyle, uh, the high foods, Right, taking health supplements, uh, never really giving your body a break from steroids, um, ultimately gave me non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and I, I think that I have a genetic predisposition for it mm -hmm. because what is that? Family, if you can define it for the viewer, so they know what that is, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Yeah, yeah. So that's buildup of fat within the liver. Now, naturally, there is fat present in the liver. Mm -hmm. It's normal. You have about three, four, five percent fat in the liver. I mean, it's an organ and most most organs have a little bit of fat. That's totally healthy. But as fat builds up over time, um, you develop a, a disease called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You have alcoholic fatty liver disease that's induced by alcohol mm -hmm. and that later leads into steatosis and uh, fibrosis. And so that's very difficult to resolve. So when it's but not I'm, alcoholic, it's a, it's a result of diet, lifestyle. Did, did, did PEDs, yeah. you know, contribute to the damage to your liver? Yes. It did. Okay. Yes, but not in the direct sense. It's more that because I didn't come off, so I didn't really come off off. Not even hormone replacement. Okay. Um, because when you have super physiological amounts of testosterone, so it's higher than natural production, your stem cells in the liver are not able to restore the amount of hepatocytes, which are the liver cells, mm -hmm. um, to have a healthy liver again. So some people go down to hormone replacement therapy, like true hormone replacement therapy being 100 125 milligrams of testosterone per week which i could have done 
right? I could have done to real hormone replacement therapy and then resolve the issue. Mm -hmm. But I figured, okay, I'm not going to be a bodybuilder. I'm not going to eat so much. And I took these steroids for bodybuilding. So why not recover and see if I can get my fertility, my testosterone levels and all that stuff back? Mm -hmm. Because again, and I maybe proved to myself that I need it medically, which I don't. And because my testosterone came back with all the effort that I put into it. So that was icing the testicles. And right, as silly as it sounds, it's you put an ice pack in, wrapped in a towel 20 minutes around your testicles three times per day, and it helps with fertility and testosterone production. It sounds absolutely yeah. silly, but it worked. Yeah, I've heard that with cold showers and ice baths, so I could see how that would yeah. help. Were there any other supplements that helped to restart your own production and get your testosterone levels back to a healthy level? Like, did you use anything like Tongat Alley? Did you use a supplement with zinc, boron, copper? Yeah, all that. 